Hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith, your hostess with the mostess. I'm a 30 year comic book veteran, having worked for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, Cross Generation, Ominous Press, you name it, I've probably worked for them. And I do other things art wise outside of comics in the field of advertising. I've also written some books on drawing comics you might have seen, uh, drawing American manga superheroes, Drawing Dynamic Comics was my first book. And I also did the handy little How to Draw Superhero sketchbook where all you need is a pencil because you do all the work right inside the book. Enough about that. This is the Book Look series. The Book Look series is where I grab a book off my library. You can see the tons of books I have behind me. And I go through it page by page with you so you can see if it's a book that you might want to buy. I like to know what I want to buy before I buy it, and I feel this is a way to give you some insight into these books. So join me for today's book look. Thanks. Everybody. Welcome to another exciting edition of Book Look, where I grab a book off my shelf and go through it page by page with you so you can decide if this is a book you might want to own. Uh, but before I dive into that, this is Andy Smith, your host with the most, 31-year veteran of the comic book industry, yada yada. Go check my website, link in the description description below. It is andysmithart.com. And of course, my new campaign through my brand, Astonishing Comics, Kordrath, The Reckoning. It's like Conan and Game of Thrones had a baby. So go check that out. Link in the description below. You saw the trailer. It's going to be uh, 64 to 70 pages of badass barbarian action. All right, on to the book look. This is a new book. A lot of books I pull off my shelf for older ones. This one, however, The Life and Art of Dave Cockrum by Glenn Cadigan. Introduction by Alex Ross just came out within the past couple months. I had to get it. I love the books Tomorrow's Publishing puts out. And uh, because they're, when they, I have a lot of books by Tomorrow's featuring uh, different artists, and they really do a good job of diving into the artist's career. So let's dive into this book. Table of Contents starts 1943, the early years. Uh, obviously, that's, uh, that's when Dave was born in 1943. Um, and uh, the introduction is by Alex Ross. It was a very nice introduction. Alex has a, a is a huge fan of uh, this time period of comics. He loved Dave's work, loved Dave's costume design, and Dave was definitely known for his, his costume designs that he would do. So um, going on, November 11th, 1943, David Emmett Cochran was born. Uh, that's awesome. I didn't know Dave was a Scorpio like me. My birthday is November 5th, 1969. So obviously I'm younger. Uh, and Dave, if you don't know, is no longer with us. Another thing I have in common with Dave, Dave, I didn't know this, was a huge Captain Marvel fan. Uh, so this is cool. This is from Heritage Auctions. It was a painting Dave did early on. 
uh, Dave just liked to draw. He liked to draw. He liked to design things. Um, these are some of the books he, he was a fan of when he was a kid. And he actually did get to do, I believe, a Captain Marvel Jr. story. I don't know if he ever did the Blackhawks, even though I read this book. I read it like a month ago. So forgive me for any lapses in memory. Um, it's very, the book is very in-depth. Uh, I love seeing stuff like this. Cockrum gets cover credited for his Son of Vulcan costume idea. So apparently he sent in just a costume idea and they used it. And he got cover credit for it. He was a big Green Lantern fan. Unfortunately, he didn't draw that much Green Lantern. He did do one issue I remember picking up in the 80s. Uh, Chuck Patton, another uh, great artist from the 80s that did Justice League, did like the framing sequence. But Dave drew the whole middle of the book featuring Hal Jordan Green Lantern. And I remember reading it and seeing it and thinking, man, I would love to see so much more of Dave doing that. Uh, guy like this, little family pictures of Dave there. Another thing I didn't know about Dave was I didn't know that uh, Patty was his second wife. I thought he was only married the one time and it was to Patty, but apparently that was his second wife. Uh, here's some unpublished stuff of Dave's. I love how they give the years because I always do the math to try and figure out, oh, how old was he when he, uh, when he worked on this stuff? Cool shot here, the Marvel family by Dave. Nightcrawler, who was originally a design, and I did know this, Nightcrawler was originally a design for the Legion of Superheroes. So Dave got his start at DC doing Legion of Superhero stuff. And um, he really, he redesigned a lot of their costumes and did such a marvelous job. Dave was also an assistant to Murphy Anderson. Another artist I really enjoyed. Uh, here we have an unpublished cover featuring the Manphibian. Uh, this character eventually appeared in Legion of, Mo Legion of Monsters number one. So, uh, Manphibian, kind of creature from the Black Lagoon-esque. Pretty cool looking. This chapter goes into uh, Dave breaking into the business. So, they're able to dig up some of the samples he did and such. Uh, this was for a strip that was done overseas called Shattuck with Dave's pencils and Jack Abel's inks. Jack Abel was an anchor who could really pull, uh, people's stuff together. Did a real nice job doing that. I love this. I wish this photo was a little bit clearer, but this is a picture of Dave and Bernie Wrightston hanging out in 1970. Uh, this is his new design that he did back for Lightning Lad. And I remember the Legion at this time period. I didn't pick it up. Uh, I have gone back over the past few years and picked up Dave's issues of the Legion. Because Dave's art was... I, I really enjoyed it. And I really liked the costume designs he, he brought to these guys. This is one of the issues I actually picked up. Just because I love this splash page that Dave did. I love how uh, Wildfire is projecting his name out and it's backwards because he's projecting it out in front of him and all these guys are reading it so it's not backwards for them. So that that's pretty cool. That's just a nice splash page as well. Here we have some of the sketches Dave would do. This book has a bunch of bunch of stuff like this in it which is really cool. Dave was just a big fanboy. He just loved comics. And it really showed through in his work. I love the design of that guy right there. Love Dave's figure drawing. Very classical style. Uh, you know, I discovered Dave's work, obviously, on uh, Giant Size X-Men number one. The reprint. It was a book I wish I had. But uh, I do not own a Giant Size X-Men number one. I should have bought it years ago when it was cheap. But I didn't, and uh, oh well. So here, this is cool. A creature from the Black Lagoon for a model kit design. 
really cool. Lips are a little red for my taste, but yeah, what are you gonna do? But here, some early designs for the Star Jammers that he created, very cool. Of course, he loves Captain Marvel Jr. Big wedding page here from Legion, two page spread. Um, he snuck a character in, I'm trying to remember who he snuck in. Oh, there it is, right back there. It's hard to see. It's, uh, I'm so bad with names. If you know me, you know I am. He loved John Carter or Mars, and it's the green formed alien from John Carter right back there. So that's pretty cool. And this book is available on the uh, Tomorrow's website, publishing website. And then there's end notes to each chapter, which is cool to kind of fill in gaps on stuff they were talking about. Love seeing pencils like this. Another uh, design sheet. Here we've got the cover. And I have this tray paperback. It's small. It's like pocketbook size. But uh, Dave did the whole thing. He did all the colors. And Dave Mandel owns the original. But yeah, I do have this uh, little tray paperback. I picked it up in the 80s as well. Enter the X-Men. You know, you, I, I feel bad because Dave really did start the new X-Men. And, you know, they, it was kind of building steam. And then he left the book and Byrne came on the book and really took it to new heights. And then Dave came back to the book. And I just, I don't know, it just, I just don't think he ever got the due that he was deserved on the X-Men. And, you know, they didn't have the big royalties back then that they did in the 90s and such. They started instituting royalties, but, you know, Dave should have got a lot more. This is called The Evolution of Storm. Once again, these were characters he created for the Legion of Superheroes. And uh, they were not picked up for the book. So he just modified uh, Storm by combining a few of the aspects of these characters into the one that we all know and love. There it is, the book that did it all, Giant Size X-Men, number one. For the longest time, I didn't know uh, that was a Gil Kane, Dave Cockrum cover growing up because I didn't know what GK meant in the initials. So, Thunderbird, great design there. I really like this design as well. Um, this was an original design for Thunderbird. I get it when you see the design they went with. This one definitely looks cooler and, uh, more Native American, but I do like that. It would have been nice to see that used for something. Here's a nice page of unpenciled, uh, one of two unpenciled pages intended for Giant Size X-Men number two. And this is when, I guess that book was split into two normal issues. I wish this was larger or I could find a larger scan of it because it would be fun to ink some of these panels. More design stuff here, working for on Phoenix. Love these pages of uh, design work that Dave did. Thought that was really cool. Of course, the end notes again. Two's Company. This talks kind of about uh, leaving Marvel, I believe, and going to DC. If I remember correctly, this is Patty, his, uh, his second wife, and uh, his, well, now she's the widower. But when you read about this and you read how they met each other and the amount of stuff that they had in common, you were just like, wow, these two people were so meant for each other. Of course, like I said, Dave did love John Carter of Mars. And he, uh, I believe, I don't have the whole run of John Carter that um, Marvel put out. I have a few of them. He did some inking 
over Gil Kane. And then I think Dave did eventually draw a couple issues of John Carter. Like I said, I haven't read this book. It's only been about five, six weeks since I got this book and read it, but I've already forgotten a few things. But that's fine, because if you like this book, you should go out and buy it, and you can read it and find out all that stuff. I thought this was pretty cool. Dave was tasked to design this uh, robot that had, it's huge. So like people, a human, uh, you know, regular sized human would fit into each one of these to control it. So that's pretty cool. Rod, 1999. I wonder if John Byrne was like, hey man, you can't be using Rod. That's my deal. Black Cat, designed by Dave Cockrum. I did not know that. Dave did a bunch of covers. This is what I love. I didn't know, for instance, I didn't know that this cover, this cover printed was drawn by George Perez. And uh, I didn't know that was off of a Dave Cochran sketch. So now that I see this, I'm like, wow, George pretty much just blew it up and light boxed it, which if you get something that tight for a sketch, why not? This was another stab at that cover, but they ended up going with that one. Uh, Gil Kane eventually did this cover based on this sketch. I got to admit, I like this sketch a little more than what Gil did. Gil really foreshortened the characters, so you didn't really see a lot of their bodies and stuff. I, I thought this was much better. This was a cover that I believe Bob Layton did the final art over. I have that issue as well. Um, so I love seeing these cover sketches. He was just the cover sketch guy for a while at Marvel. Uh, he designed uh, Miss Marvel into this new costume. And uh, El Aquila. I didn't know he designed that guy. Aquila. Yes, I probably screwed up the pronunciation. What are you going to do? This I really love. Like I said, he did do one issue of Green Lantern. I wish he would have done more. Uh, I thought he did a really striking, really handsome Green Lantern. Dave drew the Star Trek, the motion picture comic book adaptation, which I only learned about a couple years ago, and it was inked by the phenomenal Klaus Janssen. Talk about a marriage, of, a perfect marriage of two artists is, you know, Klaus inking Dave. This, this, I'm not a huge Star Trek fan, but I had to get the reprint of this just because of the artwork alone. One of his favorites, the Blackhawks. He did do a Marvel fanfare issue. The Blackhawks is DC. I'm trying to remember. Marvel has characters too that are reminiscent of the Blackhawks. I just, man, I'm blanking on the name of them. But he did do a Marvel fanfare issue that was kind of his uh, love letter to uh, the Blackhawks. So. More cool character designs by Dave. I remember seeing this character thinking, yeah, that guy's just ripping off Alien. But it's kind of a amalgamation of Alien and other creatures. One of my favorites, though, as a kid was Binary. I always thought that costume. Like, the thing I like about Dave's costume designs is I really believe they still hold up today. You know, they're not dated looking. I, I think you could draw a Binary just like that today and it would just hold up just fine. Uh, another uh, shot Dave just did, X-Men, is from 1982. Um, Moonfang, character Dave created. Once again, I think that costume holds up. I can see some of where I get my costume design sense when I look back at this stuff and see the ones Dave designed. I can really see, see like, oh my God, subconsciously, Dave, uh, Dave rubbed off on me. The Futurians. I've got this graphic novel. Uh, this graphic novel, I believe Dave did the pencils and inks on. But then when they did a, uh, a new series, uh, I'm trying to remember the publisher, Aardvark? It might have been Aardvark. Ralph Reese inked it over Dave. And Ralph did such a fantastic job. Like, I love Dave when he inks himself. But the... That new series that they put out that I actually have a trade paperback of, of the Futurians, I thought the inks were just so nice. They had in areas that had almost a Joe Kubert feel. 
uh, Cockrum and Murphy Anderson reuniting on a Thunder Agent story. So how cool is that? He started off assisting Murphy, and now it comes full circle. Murphy inking Dave. This is a book I want to get. I don't have that, and it's colored by his wife, Patty. So this is the Futurians I'm talking about. Uh, volume 2. This is the trade paperback. Oh, it's Eternity. Wait, is that right? Yeah, Eternity put it out. I said Aardvark. I'm sorry, it was Eternity. So they came out as four issues, and then they eventually put it out as a trade paperback. So I don't have the single issues. I've got the trade paperback of it. I thought this was pretty cool. Evolution of Hammerhand and Miss Mer Mercury. Uh, I love the names. I love this, these costumes right here. I just think that is so cool right here. Um, I'm trying to see. I do really enjoy this piece as well. More of the Futurchins, Avatar. I mean, I think the dated part of this might be the boots. So get rid of the, the Buccaneer type boots, but kind of keep this design just more molded to his legs. But I still think these are cool. I, I could easily see if somebody wanted to do a, a Futurian's book, which I think they tried to do and it just didn't go over well. But I, I think if somebody with a bigger name did it, it, it could still work. Love this dude, Silver Shadow. Just that drawing and stuff is really cool. And of course, Werehawk. Love it. Not Werewolf. Werehawk. Skywolf, that's it. Dude, there it is. So this is what this is uh what he did for oh it was supposed to be for Marvel Premiere, but it came out in Marvel Fanfare number 16. Skywolf. There it is. Odds and ends type stuff. Dave did a four-issue Nightcrawler miniseries in the 80s that came out after the Wolverine miniseries. The Wolverine miniseries, as we know, was written by um, Chris Claremont, drawn by Frank Miller, inked by Joe Rubenstein, and the thing was just did great. It did blockbusters. So off the success of that, they were like, oh, we'll do a Nightcrawler uh, miniseries. What the hell? So, because the Wolverine one did so well, and I bought like two of each one when it came out, I bought like four of each copy of the four issues in the Nightcrawler miniseries. Uh, that book did not uh, skyrocket in value, so uh, I still have one set, but I sold the rest. Uh, Dave jumping over to DC doing some stuff. A buddy of mine actually got to ink Dave at DC. My buddy Brad Vincata got to ink Dave on a Green Lantern quarterly story. And uh, I remember seeing the pencils because we were sharing a studio at the time. And, uh, you know, just being a little bit jealous there, honestly, because it's like, man, you're getting to ink Dave Cockrum. This is actually cool. Uh, a connection between Dave and I. This is from Justice League America Annual number six. And I just bought this because I didn't know Dave did it. But this came out during the year of DC's big event uh, starring Eclipso. So all the annuals DC put out that year dealt with Eclipso. And I did the Green Lantern annual. It was one of my second or third jobs when I broke into the business drawing the Green Lantern annual. And I had no idea Dave did this Justice League one. So uh, I had to go out and buy it. Oh, here we go. This is the Green Lantern quarterly job. I was talking about my buddy Brad Vincata inked. I think Brad inked the cover as well. I don't remember it saying in here, but uh, I know my I know Brad inked the inside of the book. I think he inked the cover as well. Uh, Wrath of the Comet. Uh, this never came out. Would have been cool to see this inked and come out, though. And then here we have some of the Futurian stuff uh, Dave was doing when he went back to the Futurians. 
I, wait, was that the Futurians or no? Yes. This was for something else. This isn't doesn't have anything to do with the Futurians volume two. This is something else because it ended. Oh, you know what these were? That's right. I remember that reading this section. Dave did these four sample pages because he just wasn't getting any work in the 90s. So he did these four sample pages to show a splash page with heroes and a kind of a fight thing. He was just trying to show all these different aspects, you know, good girl arcs that was big in the 90s and stuff like that to basically show, look, I can do all that stuff that you are hiring other people for. And it's kind of sad that, you know, in the 90s, uh, Dave was born in 43, so in 93, he was 50. He did these somewhere, uh, let's see, is it dated? He did the he did these four sample pages. I keep going back and forth. One of the few times there's no captions for this stuff. I don't know, probably when he was in his early 50s, the age I am now, and it's just sad that he wasn't getting stuff. You know, I can agree from looking at these pages i probably wouldn't have hired dave to ink his own work but his lay the layouts are fine and if you just got a good finisher over top of them i think it would have been cool and here's some stuff that he was doing towards you know the latter part in the 90s he did eventually uh what was the book We'll get to it. Oh, Soul Searchers and Company. Uh, who put that out? Uh, Claypool Comics, I think, was the publisher. And Dave did a bunch of issues of this Soul Searchers and Company. It was a black and white book. Until I read this book, I never even knew he did this stuff. So, obviously, I went online afterwards and did some Google searching to find some of the stuff just to check it out. And see what it was all about. Uh, at this point, another cool design that Dave did. Warhawk from uh, the Hawk Lord. And, you know, Dave's health wasn't that great. He was he was an overweight gentleman. And, you know, back, back when he was growing up, it wasn't that big of a deal paying attention to what you ate and stuff like that. And unfortunately, it, it did take its toll on his health. You know, you can, you can see, you know, and, and when that happens, you know, when your health is affected, it, it definitely affects your ability to produce. I mean, hell, you ask my wife, she'll tell you when my husband Andy gets sick, get, gets a cold, he's a big baby. And uh, I am, so I know what it's like, you know, just having a cold and trying to draw. Your your head is foggy and stuff, so I couldn't imagine some of the physical therapy and stuff Dave had to go through uh, trying to work. They did this tribute book for him to raise money. Eventually, uh, uh, and it's, it details it in here, and once again, my memory blows, but people talked to Marvel and eventually Marvel kicked them some money as well to help out, which I thought was uh, very nice. Probably could have done it a little bit earlier. Um, you know, you got to take care of these, these older artists and such. Uh, the last time I, I met Dave briefly, and when I say met, it was like a fan walking up saying, Hi, Mr. Cockrum, you know just telling him how I was a fan of his work and stuff was at the last Heroes Con that he ever attended. Uh, he passed away November 26, 2006. He was only 63 years old. It was from complications from diabetes. I mean, 63, that's just too young. Um, I believe it was the 2006 Heroes Con when I met him, or it might have been the 2005 it says in here when his last one was. So his last Heroes Con might have been 2005, and that might have been when when I met him. Uh, that was his last appearance, so that's, that's the Dave I remember meeting. And it just shows some art towards the end of his uh, 
near the end of his his career and stuff. But it's a really good book. If you're a fan of Dave Cockrum, I highly recommend this book just because it really does go in depth like all tomorrow's books do when they put out a book like this about a, a certain artist. I've got more of them. I'm looking at the one on Kurt Swan. I've got one on Al Plastino. Uh, I want to say, is that the hero gets the girl? That might be Murphy Anderson's. I've got the one on Mike Grell, Carmine Infantino. So I've got a bunch of these we could go through at later book look episodes. I don't know if I did the Sal Buscema one yet. I've got that too. Anyhow, enough rambling. Guys, if you like this book, I highly recommend going to get it. Check it out. You won't be disappointed if you're a fan of Dave Cockrum. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. So you can go right to the Tomorrow's website and get yourself a copy. They have a soft cover, which I got, but they also have a hard cover. So if you like hardcover books, you can get that as well. Um, thank you guys again. I really do enjoy doing these book look videos, especially when it's a book I haven't looked at in a while. Uh, it's just fun to pull it off the shelf and go through it with you guys because it's really fresh for my eyes as well. And uh, please support my campaign on Indiegogo right now, Cordrath the Reckoning. If you like bombastic barbarian action where Kordrath's tribe is slaughtered by a legion of the undead and now Kordrath and his mate Adriana must find out who slaughtered his tribe and why, then check out the campaign. Some stretch goals have already been unlocked, so there's freebies that everybody that backs the campaign will get. So go check it out. Thank you for joining me. I'll catch you guys next time. Like, subscribe hit the notification bell, and uh, share this video. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Indiegogo.